Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, I'm going to be going through how I've painted up Rogal Dawn, the Primarch of the Imperial Fists, uh, for a friend of mine's Horus Heresy army. The focus of it's going to be on why I've made the decisions I've made, um, and I'll go into quite a lot of detail on the armour, things like that, uh, but it's not going to be a blow-by-blow -blow of every single part of him, because that would be a really, really long video. But the goal of this is to create an awesome-looking centrepiece model for an army that's going to get played with a lot. So let's paint. So I primed the model black and the the sort of a pros and cons really, the vast majority of this miniature is gold. Um, so one, we have to get the gold really right, but it also means that sub-assemblies, uh, we don't need to do too many. I've blue tapped the backpack in and I've blue tapped the arm in showing the chainsaw, but we'll come to that a little bit later when we need to paint it. The main thing I've wanted to do here is get a nice base coat down for my gold. And I've done roughly a 50-50 a mix of scale 75 decayed metal and Vallejo Dark Rust. Now the reason I've chosen the Dark Rust to mix in here is partly to darken the gold down. Uh, it's got a nice sort of reddy purple uh, tint to it as well, but also it's going to make the gold a lot more matte. And one of the ways in which we can push the contrast with our metals, I'm really sorry, by the way, guys, there's so much building work going on around me at the minute. Um, so I apologize if there's the odd bit of drilling and stuff in the background for this. I hope it doesn't spoil the video too much. Um, yeah, one of the ways we can increase that contrast with our metallics um, for the tabletop particularly is by getting more of a matte finish uh, to the shadows. So once you're happy with a smooth coat of that all over the model, we can move on to the next paint. And this is Scale 75 Necro Gold. This is, I'm a huge fan of Scale 75's metallic range. They airbrush really, really nicely. So I've thinned this about 50-50. So one drop for every drop of paint, I've put in a drop of thinner. I'm spraying at about 25 PSI and I'm using a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle. When I'm doing so many metallics like this, it reminds me why I really like a 0.4 millimeter uh, nozzle. You get far fewer blockages than you do with a, a smaller size. It's one of the reasons I love using it for army painting. With regards to lighting the miniature, I've done this just as I would if I was doing a traditional uh, highlight or, or shade. So I'm picking a light source, in this case from the above, slightly to the left as we look at it. I'm thinking what areas is that going to really bounce off and, uh, and light up and painting that gold into those areas. And because it's such a key part of the model, we just take our time with this until we're happy with it. But you can see in the recesses we've left that lovely, dull, dark gold colour, that decayed metal mix. Now for the highlight, I'm going to use Metal Colour Series Gold. Now this is by Vallejo. These are made for your airbrush. You really, really need to mix them, but they're absolutely brilliant. Um, to go through the Everest again. They're designed to do that. Now, the reason I've chosen this gold is it's very, very, well, it's quite a silvery gold, as you can see when we look at it. And I wanted Dawn to have this very sort of battle-worn, um, old, antique gold look to him. I didn't want it to be like the, 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 right, basically, I think metallic schemes look amazing on the table. They're absolutely one of my favourite ways to do an army. I think the impact is brilliant because even when the lighting is a bit crap, as it often is at your club or wherever, they always look great. But I think there's a danger with metallic schemes that they can end up making the models look a bit like plastic toys um, if you're not careful. Um, so that's why, yeah, I've tried to, tried to go for this slightly older gold look. And you can see once I'd worked my way around, putting all the highlights where I had already, um, we've ended up with this much colder uh, sort of looking gold. It's very little of that necro gold still showing through. Now I want to do uh, an oil pin wash on the model to provide a little bit of definition shading. And I was going to use a bitume by Scale Center, uh, by Absalom 502. Um, in my mind I was like, oh that'd be the right one to use, it'll be great. And then I popped it in my little well palette here. I mixed it with some mineral spirits and it's not right at all. It's far too warm, it's far too red. Um, it's just not going to work with the rest of that gold. Um, so I needed to to tweak it around a bit. So I've got two more browns here that um, I've got in my, my oils box, uh, sepia and shadow brown. I just want to see what they're going to be like. Uh, and this is another one of those reasons why 
it's, it's good to have a, a test scheme when you're doing things. Um, I've done this Dawn video because a few weeks ago I did an Imperial Fist one and said to people, oh, do you fancy seeing Dawn? And, and the response was great. So I thought we'd do it. Um, but I say I was convinced I didn't need to test that bitume out uh, until I got it in the palette. So there's my little test marine um, that I often have when I'm filming. Uh, I'll try sort of check I've got the consistency right of paints and, and things like that. Um, but in this case, we're sort of checking out the colours. Now, there wasn't a huge difference between the two, but I felt like the sepia was, or sepia, however you say it, um, was just a little bit darker, uh, a little bit more what I was looking for with the effect. Uh, now I'm painting this Dawn up for a friend of mine uh, to go with an army that I painted for him a few years ago. Um, and him and me have very similar tastes, which is fantastic. Um, and I thought this sepia would just, again, just help push us towards that grungy, grimy, darker look um, without it just looking like we'd slopped oils all over it sort of thing. Um, you see I've thinned this down with mineral, mineral spirits and we're just washing it all over the armour. And you can see it's flowing beautifully. Metallics are a little bit glossy anyway, um, so that helps with the flow. But we don't need to varnish it or anything like that. As long as the gold paint is dry before we put the oils on, you're not going to have any problems whatsoever. Once it was dry, I reapplied it again. And then I let it dry and reapplied it a third time just into areas where I thought it needed a little bit more uh, of the dark colour. I just want to take a minute to say thank you very much to all of you that are supporting us here, but particularly over on Patreon. Um, larger sort of army painting plus videos, which is I guess what this is a bit like where we look at how you'd army paint vehicles and characters for your armies, uh, as well as all sorts of master classes from wonderful artists like Andy sculpting classes people like baz they're all over there but it's the support you guys give us on there that allows us to produce these multiple videos each week so we really really appreciate it um uh, yeah so thanks ever so much for your support with that this is a a lovely stage anyway oil pin washing i think it's very relaxing um but particularly when the model is <laughs> it's like this 99 gold it's really really cool so once it had dried you can see the effect we've got here much like a wash does, it's just made those recesses darker and it's brought good separation, definition, into all the areas on the model. Now this stage is going to take quite a long time and I wouldn't necessarily do all of this if I was painting a, a whole army of gold models. Uh, I might just do it in a few select areas, but I think for a, a centerpiece model like this, it's a step we need to do. Now I've gone in here with the Metal Color Series Gold. When I did the highlight earlier, I actually mixed in maybe a drop or two of the Necro Golds just to knock it down ever so slightly. And what that's meant is when I've come in to do this edge highlighting, I can use the pure uh, Metal Color Series Gold uh, and it will be that ever so slightly that step lighter. And here I'm working around all of the edges, um, just bringing back some of the shine. You can see it much more on that uh, left thigh pad because that one's more in shadow anyway. But it's particularly important if you want to yeah, if you want to bring that shine back to the metal. Um, particularly when you look at metals, it's there, there is a big difference between your shadow and your highlight. It's kind of what makes them look shiny uh, when you've got that bright highlight next to the uh, the, the very sort of dark, uh, dull recesses. So that was a it was a long step. There's no way about it. That would certainly be an evening's hobby session. Uh, would be just be working your way around and doing it. And where you've got areas that are much much darker, I've just used the Necro Gold as the edge highlight rather than the Model Color Series Gold, and it's done enough of a job. It's brought some shine back. It's brought some uh, some highlight and definition in there. But I am over the moon with how this gold's come out. Um, I think the Aquila on his back's particularly nice. Um, so yeah, re re really really pleased with that. And it was a key key part. Now when we've got gold uh, trim on fabrics i generally like to paint them with nmm um, i think it i just think it looks a bit nicer and i haven't painted nmm for a long time i don't on my models it's not really an, a, a look or an effect i particularly care for um, i really admire it but it's, it's just not my bag um, if you want to see someone who's incredible at nmm go and check out some of andy's videos over on the patreon they're, they're outstanding um, but this was i thought okay it's a little area let's have a go you know what you're doing Simple recipe, off we go. So I base coated it in Rhinox Hide, which is brown. Now I'm going in with English Uniform uh, for our first highlight. And I'm just looking at the, the fabric. You can see I've highlighted the black. But I'm looking at the fabric. Where are the folds raised? Where is the light going to reflect? And I'm just starting to put very, very small highlights in there with the English Uniform. And I think I've left nearly all of this footage in for the NMM. Um, it's sped up, obviously, as is a lot of this video. Um, as I say, it was long enough as it was. 
Um, we're just going in with the English uniform. I've got it thinned on my wet palette. Not to like a wash consistency or anything like that, but, but certainly thinner than it comes out of the dropper bottle. And as you see, each time we apply another layer of it, it gets a little bit more intense. This construction works absolutely doing my nut at the minute. It's like all day, all evening. I've got nice neighbours though, so you know, not gonna kick up a fuss. So keep applying it. Then I've switched up to a Japanese uniform, which is a lighter yellow. And we work a slightly tighter area, like so. And all I'll do is mix a tiny bit of white into that Japanese uniform uh, for a final highlight as well. But you can see it's, you know, even someone who's not massively proficient at NMM, um, you know, and haven't done it for years, it, it's, you know, you, you follow those key principles, you can get a nice effect. And it's it's pretty easy when it's on a really small area like this. You know, painting the whole model is really, really hard. But a little area like this, you'll be fine. Um so I was actually really pleased with how it came out, as I said, for, for not having done it for a long time. Um, but yeah, you've got absolute masters of it like Andy, who, you know, would, there, there are some outstanding NMM gold videos he's done over on Patreon. He did Elrond recently, absolutely superb. Um, but one of the reasons I chose the colours that I did for this one is I like how they look against the metallic gold that we've used. Um, I think they match it quite well. It just gives that slightly different sort of finish uh, on the model, which I really like and sort of shows you that these armor parts are metal and they're shiny and all of that. But this is cloth. This is something a little bit different. The cloak had a load of this sort of embroidery on as well, which I assumed was, was fabric. But when I looked at it further, there appears to be like rivets in it. So I'm assuming maybe it's very, very thin sheets of metal or something on the cloak. I don't know. That's my interpretation. So I've just done the rest of the cloak in... Um, the way I've done the, the armour. Now you can see, once we actually look at it from a distance, I think it looks really, really nice. And then of course, the best bit that you paint inevitably, you then cover up um, with another bit of the model anyway, so no drama. Now for the cloak, it's beautifully sculpted, this cloak. Um, you know, this model's quite old, Dawn, but he's got certain parts of it. You know, Simon Egan who sculpted it, he's just, he's so, so good. Um, and all the folds in this cloak are just lovely and absolutely crying out for, for the airbrush to help you um, work here. So I'm orientating the cloak uh, or uh, as if it is on the back of the model and then I'm putting my airbrush as if it was the sunlight coming straight down onto it. Now the reason it's right to left on here rather than top to bottom is simply to do with how I'm filming. But if I hold it in such a way that the spray from the airbrush can only hit the lighter raised points, we're naturally going to create some very, yeah, natural, realistic looking shadows. I prefer to say natural than realistic. And that's because it's not always the folds of the cloak that are going to be in darkness. It's the areas that are facing away from the light source that will be in dark. And red is a particularly good colour um, to work over a pre-shade like this. Now I'm using Blood Angels Red contrast paint. I wanted my red to stay quite dark. I didn't want to have to highlight it up and bring it into pink. Um, that's the right way to highlight it up and, and that's how we work. But if you want it to stay real red like this, I find starting light red and then working your way down uh, will give you that result. By having that pure white underneath it, the red that we put over the top will be the most vibrant. Okay, so it will give us a nice highlight color. So that's why I've started off with Blood Angels Red Contrast here. Uh, I've thinned that about 50-50, maybe even two drops of thinner to one drop of contrast in the airbrush. And we just build the layers up until I've got a nice solid coat of it. Now I'm gonna load up a darker red, in this case, Flesh Terror's Red Contrast. And this, I've thinned to the same degree, but I'm gonna aim into the shadows. So we're leaving those highlight points where it's just Blood Angels red, very, very thin coats of it straight over the bright white. So it gives us our highlight red without, as I say, having to add white into that red to create it. Now, absolutely, you can add yellow in, but then we'd end up with an orange cloak and we want a red cloak. So I'm aiming this into the shadows and I'm looking to get a little bit of overspray um, 
So we create a sort of third tone of red um, where the two mix. And this is what I say, I, I'd originally uh, done most of it Rhinox Hide before I thought, oh, hang on, there's rivets here. I'm not quite sure what to do. So I've done decayed metal first, uh, and that's because I'm going to hit the whole cloak with an ultramat varnish. So just like we did with the armor by killing it with that brown paint, uh, I'm just going to kill the shine of this base coat of metal um, with the matte varnish. And then I'll go on and use Necro Gold and Metal Color Series Gold over the top of it, just like we did the armor to highlight. Those obviously won't have the matte varnish over them, so they'll have a little bit more shine to them. And one of the reasons I'm doing the matte varnish is again just to give it a really different finish to the armor. So it should hopefully mean the cloak's got this lovely, soft uh, fabric look to it. Uh, I'm not going to varnish the armor or anything like that or the miniature, so that, that's the finish that's going to be on there. Uh, he's got tons of little gems all over him, doing very, very simple. Um, used a red here, used AK Carmine. So we'll start base coat it with that. And then I'm going to pick a darker red in a second, uh, which will be AK Wine Red. I want to try these two reds out. Um, someone had recommended them to me. I'm not a fan. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I won't bother using them again. I just didn't like how they worked for me. Um, you know, I've, I've got other reds that I, I prefer using. But I've gone in and taken the darker red and put that in the upper corner, as it were. So you've got lighter red towards the bottom of the gem, darker red towards the top. And then a little white reflective dot in that corner where the darker color is. And if you want to, and I like to, add a little dot of gloss varnish at the end as well. That's something much like a metallic scheme, which is I love doing for gaming models, um, tabletop models, basically models that aren't meant to be viewed on a screen with a camera under loads of lights. Because once you add those in it, you get loads of reflections and it gets a bit messy. But on the table, that shine is, is beautiful. Um, so it's something I often do to gems and lenses and things like that. Now for the head, um, as I said, that we could do a whole video, if not more, on, on working on the face. Um, so I've in the past done a, a video about painting um, Caucasian skin uh, for sort of um, how I approach it on, on army painting. Um, Andy's done some great videos as well. Um, I'll link those uh, in the top here, but I'll just do take you through a couple of the steps that I've done with the face. So starting off, primed it black, and then I'm using my Tamiya XF. Uh, to flat white, heavily thinned, five or six drops of thinner to paint, much like I did with a cloak. And then we're going to base coat it using Cadian Flesh Tone. Basically any sort of vaguely neutralish flesh tone will be absolutely fine. Um, but I say this is how I generally approach doing it. Um, I give myself a, a, a basic flesh tone. I then apply my shadow. This is Shadows Flesh by Panzer Aces. Again, you just use whatever paints you like. And I spray that from directly from beneath, which will give me just a few of the shadows to start with. And then I'm going to go in with my hairy brush and start working backwards and forwards, uh, adding in a little bit of white, maybe adding in a little bit of purple or whatever for the shadows, brown, whatever, to make the shadows a touch darker or I want them darker. But this is always going to be my starting point for when I'm doing a face. Um, and then we refine using our, our paintbrush. Um, and, and it takes ages. Again, this is at least an evening's hobby session, if not a couple. Uh, and when the model's, you know, an important one like this, you know, it's, it's worth taking that bit of time uh, on there to, to get it right. Um, let me know, like, if you're interested in really long multi-part videos here on YouTube. Um, we're not sure whether you are or not. Sort of certainly on Patreon, we tend to do sort of three or four parters for miniatures. Um, admittedly, that's because it's often miniatures that are being painted to sort of a display standard. Um, but I was very conscious sort of with the time on this one. I didn't want to take forever uh, to get a video out. So we started to glue him together pretty much. Uh, just thought I'd touch very quickly on the basin. Uh, I glued him onto his base, painted the stone with a gray, and then I've used a load of texture paint um, to add sort of more rubble around him. Um, the base I'm matching to the ones that I did uh, on my friend's army. The couple of last finishing touches, I've taken uh, the mix, the brown mix that you see on the base. It's just in my airbrush. I'm just very, very thin coats of that on the bottom of the cloak, just to help put a little bit of mud on there. Um, and then when I use the pigments on the base, as you can see here, I brought those up onto his feet a little bit as well. Um, as I said, I'm not going to go through every single thing I did on him. Um, but one thing I did do is once he was finished, before the pigments, once he was there, all assembled together, 
um, glued onto the base, all the rest of it. I went over everything again and just went, right, can I add a little bit more of a highlight here? Is there enough definition in this part? Do I need to redo that gem? Those are the sorts of steps that I wouldn't really be bothering doing on a trooper, um, but I think are worthwhile on a character model. Um, I'm a really big fan of letting the models do the work for you, particularly when it comes to characters. Um, but it's definitely worth taking that little bit of extra time um, when it's a centerpiece that's quite as important as a as a Primark character. Um, so yeah, here he is. I hope you like him. I love him. I, I wish you could see what the gold looks like um, just on the desk, you know, on the gaming table. I'm so, so happy with it. I'm going to use it a lot uh, in future projects, this one. Um, it never quite looks right under the lights and everything on the camera. Um, although I think it still looks nice. It, it, it's Yeah, I wish I could could show you it. Um, hopefully, we're going to meet up at Wyoming World actually later in the year, me and the chap I'm giving this to, um, and he's going to bring the big Imperial Fist army I did for him with him, and we'll, uh, we'll play some games. So I hope I can get some good footage of that uh, anyway. So thanks for requesting Dawn. Um, it was really, really good fun to do, um, and a nice sort of, uh, I say, character addition to the Heresy series as well. If you've got any other models in particular that you'd like to see me approach like this, just let me know in the comments and wherever I can fit them in, I'll always try my best to do so. And equally, if you've got any questions about this project, pop them in the comments, I'll do my best to get back to you. So thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you next time.